Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this is a video that should have been out last night. It was supposed to be on the end of the latest video that we did, which does the texture and the mica powder. So this is just some scrap clay, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm just kind of smushing up here. I think I got a little bit more of that same. Okay, maybe I don't. Oh, no, I do. So this isn't the color that I would probably use for these, but who knows? They might actually look good. And because they're all so small already in the elements, I'm not going to stretch them. I'm just going to do one quick twist, and that should be good enough for these. So, we have, like I said, this week we've been, or I've been, I don't know why I say we. I always speak to myself as I'm more than one person. It's just me. I run the business. I do it all by myself. I do the shipping, the order taking, the... The cutter making, everything. Um, I'm a total noob when it comes to this. And so all of this has been a huge learning experience for me. Especially using engineering programs when I'm not an engineer. That has probably been the most challenging. But I do have a son that I can call on if I need help. And sometimes he'll walk me through it. Sometimes he'll say, Mom, you got to figure this out on your own. So I basically try and do that. So... My ideas that I got for these latest cutters were from, um, actually, Susan Bailey with Turtle Soup Beads. The reason she was the basis of this is she does a lot of bead weaving, and she makes bead stash. I mean, she makes flowers, she makes round beads, she makes marguerite beads, she makes beads. She just makes beads out of polymer clay. And, um... I noticed that on one of her videos, she uses a fondant cutter in order to make her flowers. Um, and her flowers look really cute. I have not... Wow, this... And of course, you know what? It's funny because I don't want to use this as a Natasha bead. I'm using it for this. And that one came out like really nice. But oh well, it's, it's getting squished. So I'm not even going to look at it. We're just going to do it. Um, but she uses the fondant cutters, and she cuts out her flowers one at a time. So, I thought, you know what? I have an idea. So, I wanted to try this, and actually I wanted to send her some of these to try out. So, that's where this was born, okay? So, she uses the five-point flowers on these, and, you know, one at a time, she will cut them all out, and then she goes back in and decorates them, you know, adds little lines to them, and I know she likes the process because I know that it, it's peaceful for her so she probably doesn't mind you know working all day on the flowers but just in case she really does I thought I'd make some of these for her so I'm not going to use water I am not going to use cornstarch on these these flowers right here are a little under half an inch so maybe 0.4 um I don't want to do 0.3 I could but I don't want to go really small on these so anyways, the only problem I have is that the space in between them is a little tight. So sometimes it's really hard to get a sharp cut because of the fact that this is pushing into it and this is pushing into that. It's just not a whole lot of space to keep this down. I don't know if, if that makes sense, but you know, when you're using a cutter and you're just cutting a shape, you know, whatever, you can cut it. But when you've got a shape next to a shape, you're going to have this little teeny, teeny, teeny piece in between it. And sometimes those little teeny pieces do not stick to the glass. And so they're going to come up into this. So we're going to use this one without any water, any anything on it. We're just going to do it. Okay, my wrists aren't very strong, which is the reason I'm using the, uh, the stamp. You don't have to use it. Don't think that you have to use it. I just have really bad wrists and fingers. So anyways, you just pop it up and look at that. So by the time she cuts one, she will now be able to cut six at once. Okay, and then you can go in and, you know, do whatever you do. I know she likes to make lines in them. So that's when she can do that. Then she can put the little circle in the center, create the hole, you know, everything that she does. But the cutting part just makes it a little bit easier, I think. Okay, and what I want to do is not only these, 
but I want to make teardrops so you'll have a teardrop that way you know some people make flower canes some people don't make canes they make you know they'll make um they'll make their veneer and they'll make their their flower this way by making a teardrop and then they'll stick it in their hand and shape it you know and then they'll put it all together on their veneer so this would eliminate having to do one at a time and it would eliminate the fact that you don't know how much clay exactly that you use on each petal so if I make a teardrop or a bunch of these in all kinds of different shapes then it depending on what size you want you can do a size zero you can do a one a two I'm going to even do a three and I know it's not going to get all the cutters but three is good enough okay and that way you'll have your teardrop and then you can go in obviously and lay your petals the way you want to so I can do that with six I may try and make a sunflower the sunflower might be pushing it since these are half an inch I don't think I'd be able to make um, a whole bunch I don't know I probably could but I would have to separate them pretty far so that's that now these these are something I'm still working on and these are to make spacer beads and I'm using really sticky clay so I don't know how well this is gonna work but I'm gonna do this at a three and hopefully it'll be less um, demanding on me here okay I'm gonna put cornstarch on these because the difference between the flower is there's a hole in the middle. These actually look like cutters. Okay, with these, because I have where you would put the little the little hole in the center, is I needed a base on the bottom. And when you have a base on the bottom with no way for the air to get through, it makes these very um, suctiony, I guess you'd call it. There's just a huge suction on it. So a lot of times they get stuck. So I've made two different designs of these. One is these little round circles okay so now you've got hishi beads right there do these in silver you can do these in gold throw a mica powder on it make it look like it's an actual spacer and these are about the same size so there's a quarter of an inch so these are probably a 0 0.30 they're a little bigger than a quarter of an inch I didn't realize I made them so small but I guess that's cool so I'll probably have different sizes a quarter of an inch half an inch I don't think you'd go much bigger and then the other one that I made see now with these though I'm getting ahead of myself because these are spacers you're gonna probably want them thick so um, if you actually make them like a he should be you're gonna want to go to your thickest setting I think that's where the problem I'm having is coming in so this is why I haven't listed these yet and the reason for that again is because I don't have a whole lot of space in between the cutters okay and so the thin the thin piece will not stick to the glass very well you can push them and try and get them to stick like that but most of the time when it's this thick it's gonna pull it up and again big suction okay look that one worked there we go well I'll be darned <laughs> I've been having problems with that all day and thank you for uh, working while I do the video right okay so there you go there's your hishi beads and you know what's really cool I don't know if you've ever seen um, thinking outside the box with Allison Merritt she makes these um, oh darn it I can't remember but she's got these really cool spacer beads that she made the hishi beads and I think she used translucent and alcohol inks and she just mixed the colors up like browns and blues and stuff like that and did the same kind of not quite as a Natasha leaf but you know she just kind of moved it around stuck it in her hand you can do that flatten it and then you'll get the most gorgeous um, I think it would look gorgeous I think you could get like agate looking stuff um, Jasper or stuff like that depending on what colors you use with the swirl probably could even do tiger eye So that might look really cool So I haven't experimented with these obviously yet, but I plan on doing that in the future So these are the other ones that I've got for now These I'm having problems with not sticking so Don't be surprised if I get one or two that gets stuck in here 
okay and you have to push not only on the edges like you would with a normal cutter because you have cuts in here too so you have to make sure that you're pushing down on the center as well and if you're like me with no strength just use a, a stamp you know just to give it a little bit of pressure on top okay and we'll see what happens when I pull these up ah kind of got stuck so I may have to work on these put a little bit more space in between it might be easier but there you go now you got a bunch of hex nuts look at that aren't those cool she better didn't thread it and you can make your own hex nuts for your husband <laughs> all righty so that's it um the other two cutters i have while well, i got you here these are some flowers these are imprint flowers these are the same exact flowers but i don't have an outside edge on these so it kind of gave it a little bit of a different shape ah. I have to remember to use cornstarch sometimes most of my cutters if any of you bought from me you pretty much know that um cornstarch or water is not a requirement usually i don't have any problems with my cutters sticking but if they're going to be a very thin area like this because this is a, has an outline it's really close to that cutting edge so sometimes it happens so i'm gonna try and use water and see if that that helps or if I needed cornstarch we're gonna find out in a minute okay so there's that one and that one okay and so now you have the same one just no backing around that one which completely made it different okay so you have those two flowers um, right now I'm working on a gecko and let's see this is wet clay going through the pasta machine oops um my dog paws which got stuck because again we're talking about really thin lines in between that that thin line will not grip the glass like you want it to so it won't stick to the glass which means it's going to stick to this instead I'm going to add water, but I'm not really having high hopes on this. So if you buy this cutter, I have one as an imprint. So let me do that right here. But this one is not the imprint. This is a regular cutter. But if you do the imprint, it's pretty much going to look like that. <laughs> See what I mean about getting stuck? Because it's so thin around the edges that, yeah. So that didn't work. But anyways, the imprint will give you the paw print on there. But on the cutters, the cut is going to go all the way through. When you order the cutters, you're also going to get an extra, um, you're going to get an extra shape. It's going to be that shape, but no dog cutters. And the reason for that, I'll show you. Please come out. Ah, son of a gun. All right, well... This is what happens when you use wet clay, that it will not stick to the glass or anything. Aw, look at the little paws in there. Let's try this one one more time. I'm going to use a different color, something a little more dry. So let's get rid of this and let me get a towel I'm gonna wipe all this water up because nothing's gonna stick if it's wet all right so we're gonna use this purple or this pearl blue here oh actually looks like I've already got one cut out okay so that's what the cutter is gonna look like okay but the great thing about it is you can make two pairs of earrings with that so you can make it one way if you want or so let's just say we have this this purple you can make this cut really thin and you can layer it you can put it so that there's two colors okay you can do it that way that's one way the other way would be just like this 
But because you can do it that way, what that means is, ah, that's a lot of cornstarch, but I'm not taking any chances. So yeah, these aren't listed yet because I'm still working on trying to get them perfect. Please come up. Please, please. Yay! <laughs> it worked. Okay, so here we go. So now you have your cut. Ah, the one that's stuck in there. Perfect. Okay. So again, there's your earrings if you like it like that. Sorry, just hit the camera. Here's your earrings if you want to layer it on another color, like black and white for Dalmatian. You could do a black background. You can do pearl on this. Lay the white or lay the pearl right on top of the black. And the reason you get the extra cutter is now you'll have the shape. Okay, so you can cut it in a completely different color. And then what you're gonna do. is you'll add these yes and these are not going to look as great as they did because again with my fingers I have a hard time picking things up so I don't get it perfect Oh, well, that's just going to have to be good enough. You pretty much will get the idea. Okay, and just set that right there. So now with one cut, one cutter, you could either make one, this on the back or on the front of something else. That's two designs. And then you can use that. And with the extra cutter that does not have the dog print, you can come in here and cut it again. And now this is going to be extended out so you know a positive side instead of basically a negative side so that's what we've been working on we're also working on geckos um i have a request for that i've been working on that all weekend i just can't get the clay out of the feet because they're so small as you can see this is what i came up with um and you can see how small the toes are so i've got to widen those tonight and i don't know if i've already showed this i made this video like three times so I don't know if I showed you, um, remember those canes that we made last week? We used the pink and the green, and we made those. That's actually the same color, believe it or not. It just looks way different. So I used the scraps on those, and I swirled it. I made a swirl bead. So I got a lot more. Actually, they look better as swirl beads than they do the cane. So I may end up doing this on all of them. But I think the ones I used were the... Yeah, the leaf and the other one. I think it gave it a little bit more green than that one did. And then I just swirled it. And then I made a bunch of little swirls. But I could just see this with um, like an emerald green crystal and some lavender crystals, some fuchsia. I'm not sure, but, you know, I could just see that. This is a little bit wider than I wanted. If I show it to you here, you could probably see it. So I might make another focal and just kind of tone that down a little bit. It's kind of heavy. Um, but it's really wide But I could just see that as a necklace So I'm gonna make at least six more pairs of these and another one of those So I think that's it. That's where we're at. So keep looking on the website. There should be some new stuff up there pretty soon um, These two flowers are already up and I have a new bracelet bar and what it was was a bunch of circles uh, I don't think I have a cutter in here to even show you but just think of a, a bracelet cuff instead of being rectangle, it's circles and they're all connected. And then you also get a circle cutter to go with it. And what you can do is cut out like a cabochon and you'll have that perfectly matching your bracelet. So you can put a cab in the middle or you can do a cab on every single circle that's in there. So that is in there. I think that number is 604. Um, it's either 604 or 606. I'm not really sure. And that's it, guys. So I just wanted to share that with you. I will be back with a lamp work video. I'm waiting for the beads to come out of the kiln, which I could show you real quick. Before I hang you up, I can take you over to this side. And let's see. I don't know how I'm going to do this with the phone in my hand. Unless I find a way to hold my kiln open here. I will show it to you a little bit later because it comes with its own little video. So I made a bunch of um, just some little beads. 
and they still haven't cooled enough and so I don't want to really really show anything yet ooh that was a nice bead I worked a lot with silver glass so these still have yet to cool down but I made an aquarium over here and that's what I'm going to share with you I'll share the video and take a picture of it I don't know if you can really see this um, I don't have any fish in this one and the green isn't showing up so it might be because it's still too warm you can kind of see the green I'm hoping when it cools down a little bit more there'll be a little more but that's the aquarium bead so we'll show that in the process of how I did that and we'll talk to you later see you in a couple days bye